dedicate their lives to helping orphaned animals. They open their hearts and homes to all the challenges of raising a young life, no matter how large or small. They are the Wildlife Nannies. Today on Wildlife Nannies, a pack of five-week-old wolf cubs get ready to go to school with famous film animal trainer Joe Bodeman. But before that, the little cubs have to be weaned off their bottles and get used to their new outdoor enclosure. And the wildlife warriors. These special nannies are always ready to jump into action to save animals of all kinds. Over 100 patients are treated by this Australian wildlife hospital every day. They could be tortoises, kookaburra, wild boars, possums, hedgehogs, or even poisonous snakes. And today on our wildlife moment, Amir the lion. This 11-month-old is maturing into a beautiful lion and is looking for company. Will he find true love with a very special lioness? The wildlife warriors are tireless in their quest to save sick and injured animals. This Australian Wildlife Hospital and Rescue Unit collects sick, injured, and orphaned koalas and other native wildlife, and provides care and rehabilitation for all sorts of animals before releasing them back into the wild. It's around-the-clock care at the hospital, which is in Birwa, Queensland. The late crocodile hunter Steve Irwin wanted to fulfill a lifelong dream of helping animals and establish the Worldwide Wildlife Warriors with his wife Terry in 2002. The Koala Hospital gets nearly 100 emergency calls every day. 70% of the patients are victims of car accidents or domestic pet attacks. He was brought into care because of a cat attack. Um, the cat had grabbed his head, consequently putting um, a hole through his top of his nose, into his mouth, and breaking his arm. As you can see, he's here today, hopefully, to get the splint off and be 100%. He is totally frustrated though by having the splint on, as you can imagine, um, because he just wants to hold on and grab on and grab onto my back, and he just can't seem to do it, so, but anyway. It's a frustration that he'd soon be over. The hospital is also a refuge for countless wildlife carers and nannies who bring their little foundlings to the emergency room. Over 30 different species are admitted to the hospital, and the cost of treating one animal ranges from 100 to several thousand dollars. The doctors and nurses who work here are all part of the wildlife warriors. A green sea turtle named Turt has been here since April. Fishermen first lifted the 42-pound floating turtle into their boat for a closer inspection. They removed a discarded fish hook that was lodged in her mouth then released her back into the water, thinking she'd be all right. Later, a concerned family picked her up and brought her to the Coast Guard, who then alerted the rescue team at the Australian Wildlife Hospital. This is a green sea turtle. Uh, it's basically a floater. It can't submerge under the water, can't dive down to reach its food. Um, this, this can be a build-up of parasites, or sometimes they eat plastic bags, um, thinking that they're jellyfish, so thinking that it's food. And um, yeah, so they can't, it causes them to float on the surface of the water. And then um, they get solar damage from the sun. And um, they're also prone to boat strikes. Um, so yeah, boats run over them. So I think we've got a, there's a little, looks like a little scar on their shell. And that's from a, a boat, boat propeller. The vet has treated her. And now it's time to see if Turch ready to rejoin the other turtles back in the wild. Will she be able to swim and dive normally again? New additions at the film animal park of Joe Bodeman. Six young European wolves were sent to this world-famous Hollywood animal trainer from an animal park in Aschaffenburg, Germany. These growing boys still need mother's milk, 
enriched with vitamins and supplements to help them grow into healthy adult wolves. At this early stage, the nannies have their hands full. They have to replace their mother and also get them used to people so that they'll be better suited for film work. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. I find it fascinating that wolves can sense a mood and disposition of humans over great distances. I mean, we don't even know what kind of mood we're in a lot of the time. The wolf, on the other hand, senses that from far away. I find that fascinating. The myth of the wolf is interesting too. Simply fascinating. In early history, there were always stories about how dangerous wolves are and how they attack people, which is not true. A wolf is extremely shy and will not attack humans. This is the new home of the baby wolves, the Film Animal Park in Eschede, Germany. Animals from many film and television productions live here in a 144,000 square yard enclosure. It's also a training center for new potential animal stars. The five week old pups have been at the park for three weeks now. Joe is supported by a whole team. After all, six babies have quite an appetite. Milk bottles have to be prepared six to eight times a day, and Joe couldn't manage to raise these foundlings by himself. He's got over 80 other animals to care for. But wolves are Joe's big passion. In the 1970s, he trained several young wolves at his school to seek out explosives. I love wolves a lot, probably because they remind me of myself. They're very honest and sometimes shy. It's their whole attitude, how they present themselves, the wildness that they have, and of course, their temperament. The pups will now have to learn to live together in a pack and form their own hierarchy. But at the moment, Joe is still the alpha or lead animal. This helps with the training, of course. It's time to get these pups used to solid foods. In the wild, the mother would bring prey and present it to her young. In nature, the mother would regurgitate the food with the necessary fluids, and then the pups would begin to eat. They instinctively ask this of their mother by licking her muzzle. She then regurgitates the meat, and the pups will eat it. On the menu today, approximately three ounces of fresh beef tartare for each animal daily. It's now time to move these cubs outside. I don't think anything will happen. They all know each other. The first few days they were already in the group, and they already met the other wolves in the park, and the other animals. Outside, there's another surprise for the cubs. Joe wants to introduce them to Alf, a baby lion. Will these completely different species get along? The wildlife warriors have their work cut out for them. Turt has to be lifted out of the water, a real feat for these nannies. Turt still relies on his nannies for food and has to come out of the water to eat. This provides the nannies with a perfect opportunity to examine him. Turt had to undergo surgery to remove a hook that was embedded inside her. She'd also ingested a lot of fishing line, which was then caught up in her intestines. As a result, she had a big accumulation of gas under her shell, which is now causing her to float. And now it's time to go back in the water. With the continued care and treatment, Turt's well on her way to a full recovery. 
That mixture, we've been feeding it every second day because it's a pretty stressful process for her. I'm going to have to let her go. So that shows how she floats, basically. She can only go down sort of so far. Next door, head vet Dr. John examines the little possum. Unfortunately, the diagnosis is not favorable for the impatient patient. The cast has to remain on. The fracture is more complicated than anticipated. Yeah, one more week, Kelly. Sorry. How's his wound? It's just that he's so active. He's just at the age where he wants to play and he wants to try everything and be everything and he can't. Like a little boy, I suppose, you know. But the doctor says no. The doctor says no. <laughs> doctor says no. <laughs> Too early yet. So uh, we need to leave it for one more week. Uh, then we can take the splint off, keep him in a cage. <laughs> On the next stretcher, a team is examining a fully grown wombat. He was hit by a car and brought in by the driver. Nanny Kelly already has another patient in tow and needs a quick diagnosis from Dr. John. This little kookaburra probably has a concussion. There's uh, no breaks in his wings and he's very fat. What we'll do is we'll keep this little one in for a couple of hours um, and then later this afternoon we'll bring him over to your place and um, if he's okay you can release him at home because he comes from near your place. Is that alright? Yep, cool. Every day is different and exciting at the hospital. Katrin, a German animal caretaker, works as a volunteer and helps out wherever she can. But what kind of a patient is hiding here? This is Amir. He's an 11-month-old lion and is only alive thanks to the special care of Nanny Katya. We got Amir from a lion breeding farm. Uh, he wasn't very well nourished and we had problems with, or the people had problems with feeding him. And uh, this ended up that he got very sick. He was uh, lying down, sleeping all day long and wasn't playing like all the other lion cubs. And that's when we decided we have to take him here and uh, have a supervision of a vet, uh, vet also. Katya founded the Lion Rescue Organization, Great Cat South Africa, with her husband. Our project is to protect lions in, in the first uh, thing, is uh, to protect them from canned lion hunting. Uh, but if there's tortures or lions who are not very well looked after, nature conservation brings them to us or asks us to, to take care of them. Many other lion families also live at this rescue station. Katya and her husband have over 30 employees that help them take care of all the animals. Most were saved from zoos, circuses or private homes. Amir is constantly looking for the company of other lions. Without offense, though, these attempts to join could easily turn deadly for Amir. It's best if we go now. Otherwise, they get overstimulated and excited. Come on, Amir. Come on. Amir. Amir, in the beginning, he was a cute little cub and playing with us, with the children, with the dogs. He was like a little bit bigger than a house cat, but it was fine, it was still okay. Uh, and it ended up that he tore everything to pieces and that the dogs weren't so happy to be scratched and, and uh, even my children or ourselves, the grown-up people, the adults, saw that he needed a friend and uh, we thought it would be preferably a, a female for him so that there might maybe be a bond for later. Katya's skills are about to be put to the ultimate test. Will Amir and Cleo get along? This is little Aaron here. Echidnas are very special to Australia. They're only two of, one of two monotremes, so egg-laying mammals um, that inhabit Australia. And so he's actually seven months old. He's only a little guy. 
he came in to us two months ago because he was found wandering without his mother he's too young to be without his mother and he was found wandering around very unwell and very thin now this motherless australian hedgehog just has to start eating then he'll have a good chance to be returned to the wild But not all patients are so tame. The wildlife warriors are tough. Bites, scrapes, and bruises are all part of the job. Blood doesn't just flow from the patients. Once in a while, even the doctors have an accident. <laughs> it didn't hurt. I didn't even feel it. I didn't even know I was bitten until I pulled my hand away. Well, that's just terrible. No, they're non-venomous. I, I didn't even feel that really that much at all. But no, it doesn't hurt. So it happened so quick, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah it happened really yeah, quickly. I, she didn't properly, like she got me just a little bit with not all the tea. So. They have a look, yeah. <laughs> Have a look here. So the teeth, they're not that sharp. It's all spine, you know, it's all punched. It's back right here. You can see. Thank goodness all patients don't bite that quickly. Uh, we think this animal's pretty healthy now, so we'll be able to release it back to where it came from. Lisa, can you tell someone that there's a koala walking on the floor? Uh, this blind koala is the hospital's mascot. Since his chances of survival are slim in the wild, he's here long term. Time to see if our echidna likes hospital food. It's, con it's considered to be a beak. His mouth never opens like a normal animal. They can only open a small distance. His bottom jaw will actually do this. So his tongue will actually um, um, come out of the mouth, scoop up the food and come back in, and then his grinding plates will grind them. We need to grow him up and make him bigger and um, put on weight before he goes out there. Get him eating termites and then he will go into the wild um, and um, yeah, forage around out there. Looks like she's well on her way to recovery. She's already busy exploring her new temporary home. Meanwhile, the kookaburra is only a few miles away from its home and freedom. Volunteer Katrin gets the task to drive one hour to take the bird back to its nanny, Kelly. He can then be released into the wild again. Oops. Yeah, it's great. But this feathery patient has other ideas. The young pack of wolves need as much fresh air as possible. Today is their first time on the park's dog meadow. Animal handler Ruben Liedke is in charge of the daily exercise activities. At this age, it's very important that the pups are massaged all the time. They can't go to the bathroom on their own and need help. So one has to lift them up, put a towel under their bottom, and massage their tummy and intestines gently. And then they go to the bathroom. And if you're lucky, it all ends up in your hand. Alf, the six-week-old African lion cub, is from an animal park near Gütersloh, Germany. Joe wants to introduce him to the wolves so that they can work together in front of the camera. This is the first time that Alf will meet the wolves. I'm already really excited to see how this will turn out. Of course, we have to watch that he doesn't get a big shock. There are quite a few new playmates all at once, and we want this to go well. Let's see how he does. <laughs> Wee, guck mal, wen ich mitgebracht habe hier. Wee, 
The first meeting seems to be going very well. The young wolves are thrilled to meet their new playmate. Come here, With all that wolfish affection, Alf can barely keep up. At this age, there's no danger for any of these playmates, but Joe has to be careful. In nature, a grown wolf can easily become prey for a big lion. Come on, defend yourself. Come on, that's good, defend yourself. And back onto the lap you go. That's good, you're back on my lap. Yeah. Okay. And it's time for a second attempt. Wolf and lion sure make strange playmates. They're a little like dogs and cats. But anything is possible here at the film animal park. At least for now. <laughs> Alf has finally had enough of all his new playmates. Yes, I think it's a little much for a lion cub with this many pups. Look how they all swarm around him. But he'll get used to it. It won't take too long. Joe is satisfied. The wolves are integrating into a pack nicely, are in good health, and can soon be trained as film animals. Bringing these six together worked very well so far. The next step is to train each pup specifically and according to his ability. Maybe one of them likes to jump, while another is more timid. One is more of a daredevil or has more of a fighting spirit. And that's how I will train them and prepare them for work in front of the cameras. Wolves are often cast in vampire and horror movies, or are booked for nature documentaries. This means that there's an exciting future waiting for these six babies. But for now, the pups can enjoy their childhood. Come on, Amir. Look. Here's a new girlfriend for you. Look, this is Cleo. Is this your new girlfriend? Do you like her? Whether or not Katya's matchmaking is working will now become apparent very quickly. Is she something for you? Then you won't be so alone. It's not the first meeting between Amir and Cleo. They've often met through the fence. But a direct meeting would have been too dangerous at the beginning. Let's have a look. Let's see what they'll do when they really meet up. Then we'll know for sure if they're compatible or not. Well, this looks really good so far. Today is their first date without any obstacles. And it seems to be working out just fine for these two. They play beautifully together, and Amir seems to be very happy. He's not interested in us anymore. He's uh, really playing his life as a lion. Time for a romantic stroll around the park. Amir and Cleo already look like soulmates. Amir seems happy to have finally found someone that will join him on his explorations of the park. Lions are not loners, and it looks like Amir's found a bride and can now spend the rest of his life with her. The escape attempt by the kookaburra has shut down operations at the emergency ward for a few minutes. The doctors and staff are trying to catch the little fugitive with no success. It's time for the professionals. One grip from the animal catcher, and this little escape trip is over. If he'd known what was ahead of him, this kookaburra probably wouldn't have tried so hard to escape. Now stored safely in his cage, he will now start on his journey back into the wilderness. Take him over to Kelly's, and um, hopefully God will release him there. Great. All right. That's good. The kookaburra can't be released at the clinic. He has to return to his territory. Otherwise, he's got no chance of survival. Volunteer Katrine will now bring the bird to its nanny, Kelly. Hello. How are you? 
is our uh, video. It's going well. We had a test fly <laughs> at the zoo. I appreciate you bringing up the um, kookaburra yes, for no release. Problem. I was a anyway. Kookaburra is a very family orientated. He'll get adopted here very, very easily. But, um, and it's in the, his, his range, his home range. He will be familiar with the territory once he's released and up looking around. And the other kookaburras, hopefully, <laughs> will accept him here. Um, whereas that, if it was, say, the hospital release, not, he wouldn't have a chance. They'd attack him until he was dying. For sure. Yeah. So we can bring him up here. Yes. And that'd be good, he can fly straight up then. Be good, won't it, matey? Hello. Without even hesitating, this kookaburra begins his flight back to freedom. Always good to see him go. Back to normal. And he'll probably sit there for a little while. He's looking around and wondering, where am I now? Unfortunately, the little possum with the cast will have to be patient for a little while longer before he can rummage around on his own again. He's got to wait another week. I was hoping his split would come off today, but he's got to wait yeah, another, another week, week unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my darling. Yeah. Next time, Nanny <laughs> Kelly will keep an especially close eye on her patient yeah. so that he doesn't fall victim to a household cat again. Next time on Wildlife Nannies, will eight-week-old raccoon Zorro be able to learn how to climb and scavenge for food? And will Dr. Michael Katz find a new home for his baby storks, Max and Moritz? And will his recovered foundling be able to fly in the wild again? Also, join wildlife keeper Jack O'Neill as he teaches his new assistant, Anna, how to take care of cheetahs and zebras on his gaming reserve. <laughs>